Before we dive into the uh, code to create uh, uh, an IPN listener in PHP, I thought it might be useful if we review how the payments are processed on your website, both without and with uh, instant payment notifications enabled. We'll take the hypothetical situation that my website has a product on it, a book which somebody wants to purchase. They click on the PayPal Buy button, that takes them over to PayPal, where PayPal presents them with a request for their logon credentials. They enter their logon credentials, and all being well, they're going to thank you for their order. Now at this point, if you have auto return configured in your website and a valid page, PayPal will send the client back to your web server, to your success page, and then you can issue a message saying, well, thanks very much. Um, now, let's take a look at IPN, because with IPN, and if you've got digital goods, maybe you can present a different workflow which allows them to download uh, that book if it's an ebook. So we'll pick the story up where they have presented with the PayPal account credentials, they log on, they get the same message before, nothing different. But at this point, PayPal knows that you want an instant payment notification on your server, so it calls a program on your server. Let's call it the IPN listener page. And this time, you take the details that PayPal sends you, you record them to a database, and your listener is effectively done. It's validated the transaction, and it's recorded the transaction. Now, your new success page, where your client will be redirected, interrogates the database, finds out that the payment completed successfully, and then can send them to a thank you page, but this time with a download option to download the digital book. Now, isn't that much better? Now, some of you may be wondering why you need IPN. If you have auto return enabled in your seller preferences, as well as payment data transfer, uh, the return uh, success page can be passed some information confirming the transaction and the size. Well, there are two reasons why this can't be relied on. Firstly, the data is transferred as a get rather than a post and is very simple to spoof. And secondly, the return is actually optional. Uh, the page which PayPal presents your client after the transaction has completed uh, says you will automatically return. Well, they can close that window down and never return to your site, in which case you'll never get the notification. So the only surefire way of getting reliable transaction confirmation in real time from PayPal is via IPN. You know, this may be a good time uh, to go through the settings on your PayPal account to enable uh, IPN. You need to log on to your PayPal account, click on your profile, and go to My Selling Preferences. And in there you'll find an Instant Payment Notifications Update button. Check that and you get an input box where you can type in the URL of the program that's going to do the listening uh, to the instant payment notifications from PayPal. Don't forget to check the radio box as well to say you want to receive them. Click Save. Now, although we can't rely on people auto-returning to our site, preferably we want them to return to the site after the transaction's completed, and so we need to go back in uh, to Seller Preferences, and in Seller Preferences, check on the Update button next to Website Preferences. And in the same way as before, you're going to get yourself a little input box where you can type in the URL of your success page. In my case, it's success.php, and this is going to give the message back to the client saying thanks for your purchase. Make sure Auto Return Radio Box is checked on. If you don't want to use IPN, then you can use Payment Data Transfer, but it's not reliable and it's certainly not guaranteed to get through to you. We won't be using it here. But make sure you have the PayPal account optional button checked. This allows people to pay with uh, payment methods other than the PayPal account, such as debit uh, and or credit cards. Okay, this is where we uh, dive into some PHP coding. Now, the first thing I need to say is this is for absolute beginners, either beginners in PHP or beginners in IPN and PayPal or both. So if you find this uh, a little bit simplistic, then uh, really perhaps something else is for you. Uh, maybe the PayPal developer site is where you need to go. Uh, but for those of you who are sticking around, I uh, stripped this IPN listener back to its, uh, well, almost to its bare bones. And it is uh, what I'm using on one of my sites, apart from some you know, uh, localized uh, processing that I require. This is essentially what's running on one of my uh, live sites right now. Now the next thing I need to say is that I do have any comment code and uh, uh, this, this program may get separated from its explainer video and frankly I've never come across a program with too many comments yet, although uh, <laughs> you may think differently when you see the number of comments I put in this program. Um, so, so try and ignore the comments for now 
uh, I'll I'll speak to the comments uh, in the soundtrack. Um, so, so, so try to go. If you want to look at them, look at them later on, and you can go through them at your leisure, and you download the file if you download the file. Now, remember, this program is the one that should be running as a result of an invocation from PayPal. So, PayPal has looked at our URL in our seller preferences IPN settings and said, "This is the program." In this case, it's uh, I've called it Listener.php. So you need to open your uh, browser, your browser, your um, your editor, your Notepad, or in this case, I'm using Notepad plus plus, and put in the uh, start and closing delimiters for a PHP program. Now the protocol with PayPal, I remember, is PayPal invoking this program, or at least we hope it is, um, is to send back a raw header, a raw 200 header. Uh, that's the first step, and that's all you do. Header. HTTP 200, and that sends the raw header back. So step one is completed. So this, this isn't really a complicated program so far, and it doesn't get much more complicated to be to be truthful. Uh, the next step we need to do is we need to take the data that uh, <coughs> PayPal has sent us, and we need to build a block of data to send back to PayPal. Well, why do we do that? Well, as I say, this might have been invoked by PayPal, but it's also possible that somebody's trying to hack our site. So what we do is we take this communication, take the data that's been uh, tapped onto the end of it, and turn it around and send it straight back to PayPal and say, PayPal, did you send this information to us? And it either says yes or no. It's a way of authenticating the invoker of the uh, of the, uh, uh, the, the the program. No, yes, you can look at headers in HTTP, but those can be spoofed. So this is the uh, the way that uh, PayPal gives us to verify that the instant payment notification has indeed come from PayPal and not anybody else. So what we need to do is turn around that information, but there's a slight twist to it. We have to put at the front of the information a fixed text field. The fixed text field. Is C, as you can see here on line 47, CMD equals notify validate. Now, after that, we must put the data in word for word, uh, byte for byte, exactly as uh, they sent it to us. So we need to loop through the post data, and that for each does that, and then just adds it on to the end of the RESP variable there. Now, before we go back to PayPal and validate that the data was indeed sent by PayPal, um, we should extract the uh, data we want out of it into local variables. Now there are many variables that uh, are available to you and I suggest you look on the IPN documentation to see what's around, but in the interest of brevity and clarity I've stripped it back to just a few here, such as the name of the item, the number, the currency, the amount, the name of the payer email, and uh, just one field I want to point out at the bottom there. It's, it's none of the, this isn't a mandatory field, but it's one I use uh, quite extensively. It's the custom field, but we'll get onto that a little bit later. So now we have our variables stored locally. We built our data to send back to uh, PayPal. What we need to do now is build an HTTP communication to send back to PayPal. Say, PayPal, did you send this to us? Yes or no? So the first thing we need to do is get a header together. And so HTTP head is just uh, the uh, fixed header fields of an HTTP communication uh, but with the, the data uh, on the end of it as well as we'll put there in a minute but we need to have in the header the length of the data so the function string length over there gives you the uh, amount of data we've got in the header that we built earlier on with the prepended command notify validate ahead of it. So now we create a file handle because we need to write this into a pseudo file ready to send over to PayPal and so we use FSOC open for that. It's going to go to port 443. These are PayPal specifications. And then uh, the if statement there uh, has a not in front of it saying if the execution of the HTTP communication failed then we probably lost uh, communication from our web server. Either the site's gone down, or the uh, internet's gone down, or the connectivity to our web server's gone down, but either way, it can't reach the PayPal service. Now, you need to handle this in any way your business logic sees fit, but anywhere between those curly braces is where you need to perhaps make a, a note of this, uh, either a log file uh, message, or an email, or a text message, and you need to decide how you handle that. I actually haven't had this happen to me yet. 
but it can happen, and it's it's uh, it's something you need to to legislate for. Uh, right, so now we've uh, initiated the communication, we've got through to the server. The next thing we need to do is uh, put the uh, file handler out to PayPal. And we do this with fputs, so we point it to the file handler, which is just an address off the start of the block, the header that we built earlier with the length of the data block, and then the data block that we built earlier, the RESP variable, which has that uh, fixed text string plus all the stuff that PayPal sent to us. And then, as you can see on line 100, we read the response, and we're reading 124 bytes. Uh, that's just straight out of the PayPal book. And we need to read that response and find out what it's saying to us. Uh, has it recognized the information? Has it not recognized the information? Well. If the response from uh, that communication is verified, then we have a valid payment. Payment was uh, genuine and verified, so we have uh, a new transaction in our bank account, which is, which is great. But this instant payment notification, this gives us an opportunity to record as a valid and verified transaction in our own databases. So at this point, you need to perhaps take this opportunity at the start of this red curly brace here to put your code in here to record that this transaction was genuine. Now let me tell you the way I handle this. Now remember at this point we have two completely separate web communications taking place at the same time. The first is our customer who's been sent to PayPal where they have just paid and are waiting to be sent back to our success page and the second is this program being invoked by PayPal's IPN backend, informing us of a new transaction. Now if our customer is going to be returned to a success page that is going to allow them to download the product, then that page needs to be completely confident uh, that the payment has been verified. And it's here in the IPN listener that we need to give that page some way of finding out and we do that here between these two curly braces. There are many ways to do this, but I'll explain how I do it. I won't include uh, the specific code, but I'll run through uh, a demo of it in a minute. Now, if you remember early in the program, we extracted the data PayPal gave us about the verified transaction into some local variables. And hopefully you remember me pointing out this custom field. Now, this is the field I use to reconcile these two completely separate processes uh, that are taking place. It all starts before our client is sent to PayPal. When they click the buy button, I create a new payment pending record in a payments table. This record is inserted and created with various data, but the three most important fields are the client's session ID, the uh, payment status, which I flag as pending, uh, as they've yet to be sent to PayPal, and the last important field is the record number itself of the uh, ID of the field record when it was created. This record ID is then passed to PayPal in the custom parameter field as part of the buy button. Now at this point in the code, in the IPN listener, we know that the payment is verified and we've also got the record ID that we created when the client hit the buy button and it contains their session ID. Now all we need to do now is find that record, uh, update its status from pending to verified, and insert the additional information about the product and price that has been confirmed to us here by PayPal. Then, when the client is returned to our success page after 10 seconds, the session ID they had will remain the same. The success page then queries the payments table for all transactions matching that session ID, but have a status of completed and then extract the product information to present the client with a download option. But if we get the response invalid it means we've, uh, we've got somebody trying to hack the site and uh, we, uh, we just ignore it. Um, you could do something here, try and trace this down and maybe um, uh, try and block uh, the uh, IP address from where it comes from, but uh, again, down to your own business logic. Then, don't forget, we need to close the, uh, the file handle, 
And finally, the last step, just pour yourself a cold one. Now, what I'll do now is I'm going to save this uh, onto my server. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use one of the PayPal tools to make sure that this uh, is behaving correctly according to the protocol. Right, now the way we can check our uh, PHP listener is behaving um, is to use the PayPal developer tool uh, called the IPN Simulator. And here's the URL up here. It's uh, developer.paypal.com forward slash developer forward slash IPN Simulator capital S. In here, we need to put in the handle. And the handle is exactly what we typed in earlier when we were configuring seller preferences. So in here, I'm going to put crazytom.com forward slash pp forward slash listener dot php. We, we can select the type of transaction we want to validate. So let's try and validate an express checkout transaction. Now it uh, or complete some fields for you as test data. You can mess around with those if you wish. But a simple send IPN will send this request to your handler. PayPal will uh, look at the response and say whether or not it's conforming to its agreed protocol. So let's send that and see what happens. There we go. IPN was sent and the handshake was verified. So we're in with the chance here with this code and so will you if you use it. Now, uh, where can you use it? Well, I find it very useful on digital downloads and uh, the next thing I want to show you is uh, this code working live on one of my sites. Right, let's see the code in action. This is one of my sites using this code, 99cimages.com, where all images are high resolution and are available for 99 cents each, including vectors. So, uh, type in uh, wild uh, woman. Let's see what we get. Okay, uh, let's just choose one of these. Uh, how about this one? Right, now this is my buy button, which will, after a couple of checks, take me through to pay. So let's click on that. Right, I have to agree to a couple of radio boxes, and then I click pay to go to PayPal. Now, let, before we do that, let's take a look at the uh, payments table. As you can see here, the last ID entered is 591 on this particular payments table. If I now click and pay to go to uh, uh, PayPal, we go straight through to the PayPal site, and now if we refresh this uh, table, you'll see that there is a pending uh, record, but the record ID is 593. Now, what's happened is, uh, we pass that information over to PayPal in our data going through to this particular pay, uh, page. So I can uh, enter my password. Purchase the image, pay now. Right, now at this point I'm going to be redirected within 10 seconds. I can click here and go straight back. So let's try and beat the IPN notification. Right, let's refresh the payments table and 593 is still pending. 593 is still pending. One more time, completed. And there we go. I've rerouted back to my success page. My success page is interrogated at record 593. Found out that the payment status is completed and has released the image uh, available for download. And actually that's pretty fast because uh, this is gonna be taking the image from the Amazon uh, S3 story. So I can now download that. So that's instantaneous um, digital downloads available. Uh, with using this code and I hope you found this helpful any questions just uh, use the comment section I can't guarantee to answer them but uh, if you like the video found it helpful please give me a thumbs up or a subscribe or both